can bind the demon, you can cast it away, it will keep on roaming around looking for another opportunity to affect someone. And sin brings about causes coming into people's life. Sin is a gateway that brings about causes coming into people's life. So continuously we will stand in our guard that we will not allow the enemy to come back to torment us and our household. Yes, I've prayed the sinner's prayer. I've dealt with that pattern and God is doing something new in my life. But immediately you put your hand into iniquity again, you are giving room to the enemy to attack you. God forbid we will not do that in the name of Jesus. We will not do that in the name of Jesus. So the beginning of causes was even from the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, when man sinned against God, and God pronounced a cause. Let's look at it from 15 to 18. So that is the genesis of causes. When man sinned against God, God pronounced a cause upon man, uh, upon the serpent and upon the earth, and we are part of the earth. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 15. It says, and I will put enmity. That's God talking to the um, serpent now. Maybe I start from 13, really. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Put enmity between you, thee, and the woman, and between thy seed and a seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Thank God the seed there was uh, Jesus finally putting an end to the works of the enemy. So that is the beginning of causes. Even when Cain killed Abel, God cursed Cain and said, Look, you will be a vagabond. Wherever you go, they will destroy you. Then he had to plead that the cause was uh, too much, and God had to do some form of a amendment. Praise the Lord. So the beginning of sicknesses, disease, disabilities, you know, barrenness, so many things that run in family, they were all a result of causes or evil covenants that run in family. But now as a worker, how do we take our stand and live in this liberty? which Christ has given to us. The aim is that causes run in family we were caused from the beginning, and God, the God we are serving is a covenant-keeping God. He keeps his covenant to even up to the third generation. So we, as children of Abraham by faith, we want to walk as covenant children, and we want to stand in the liberty Christ has uh, given to us. So, I will want you to know that when you gave your life to Christ, I will repeat it, we said something like that on, uh, in, on Wednesday. When you gave your life to Christ, you are born again. Your spirit man is absolutely born again. But now, your soul needs to be renewed. Some things need to be taken care of in your soul. And because of that, because evil patterns, if you grow in a house where everybody's cursing everybody. Everybody is doing the same thing. It will rub off on you, whether you like it or not. That environment will rub off on you. So even though you are born again, that habit, that thing that is rubbing off on you that you see yourself doing like the way your mother used to do or the way your uncle used to do or the way your father used to do has to be dealt with in the place of prayer. So that's why now you are going to pray, you know, based on Galatians chapter 3, 13 and 14, that God has redeemed you, you have been redeemed. So this thing that runs in the family, Lord, I dissociate myself from it. I'm no longer part of it by the efficacy of blood of Jesus because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, being made cause for us. I try to understand. He redeemed us from the powers of darkness, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. So these are just scriptural things we do 
to stand firm in this liberty Christ has given to us according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. So, when you do that, continuously, the enemy cannot oppress a child of God that lives in holiness. That's the truth about it. They will come, but they will run back. They will not be able to touch you because they will not find any fault in you. Very important. The reason why people still suffer some of these things is because they are not standing on, uh, uh, what in, in, in faith, standing in the holiness Christ has given to them and staying on lane. If you don't stand on lane, then what happens is that the enemy has a right because according to uh, Deuteronomy 28, you will see the, the blessings that come from uh, verse 1 to 14. But the course starts from 15 downwards up to about 64. When you do this, you are cursed. When you do this, you are cursed. When, when you are still lying. In fact, the one that bothers me that I think we are going to discuss as um, <laughs> workers. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28, 46. Because I'm bringing this now as workers in this vineyard. If anybody sees it, you can read it for me. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And let someone else open Jeremiah 48, 10. I want us to walk in this liberty. I do not want us to put any more problems into our own lives. 45, I mean. Moreover, okay. all these causes before, that's it. Okay. It starts from 45, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 45 to 48. Yeah. Moreover, all these causes shall be, shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandment and his status which he commanded you. Mm -hmm. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder, and on your descendants forever. Then 47. 47. That is where, yeah. I'm because going. you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, for the abundance of everything. That is it. Just hold on. You see the curses that go, that if you do not even serve the Lord with joyfulness, those curses can come on us. Are you seeing it? When you start from 45 to that place, these are the things that will happen but because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So it's very, very important for us to get the blessing of serving because for the mere fact you are serving God, you are blessed. You are blessed. God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. According to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, it is not unrighteous to forget your good work, according to Galatians chapter 6. But if you are not serving God joyfully, you will not get the benefits of the blessings. Are we getting it? You will not get the benefits. Then you can read also Jeremiah 48, 10. You will not be able to enjoy the benefits. So serving God, we must serve God joyfully. Don't come grumbling. Don't murmur. Don't murmur. Serve God joyfully. And the blessings will be, there will be overflowing blessing. Sister Bimbo, you can still read, Jer since you have the mic there. Jeremiah 48, 10. Yeah. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cursed is he who... Who keeps back his sword from blood? Yeah, that, just hold on. So if you are pretending, so it doesn't matter whether you have said, God, redeem me from the cause of this sin, but ongoing, you are not doing the things of God joyfully. The first place we read in Deuteronomy 28, you are not doing the work of God in truthfulness. You are deceptive. You are one face in church. You are another face at home. You are all this type of thing. That is the word of God. So we have to amend our ways to say, Lord, help me to serve you in spirit and in truth. Very important. Help me to serve you in spirit and in truth. Because especially as workers, 
Everything you have to do has to do with integrity. The fear of the Lord. I do understand. Don't be deceptive in whatever you are doing because a price has been paid upon you and you must maintain the, your lane. Very important, you must uh, maintain your lane. It is my prayer that God will help us that we will not put ourselves into bondage situation again in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We will not walk in disobedience. We will not walk in, 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 in error because another thing is when you walk in error, you put yourself into bondage uh, situation. God forbid. God will help us and we will walk in the right direction in the name of Jesus. So if anyone is here, you know, somehow you know you've just been deceiving yourself. Apart from the inherited causes that you will deal with, you are still putting causes upon yourself if you are not walking in obedience. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want us to know that Christ has made a way for us. And as children of God, we must continuously walk in this victory. We are overcomers. I want you to declare I'm an overcomer. Uh, cause costless will not stand. If I don't cause a cause, it will not stand upon my life. It will not stand upon my family. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has redeemed me from every cause, from every evil covenant in the name of Jesus. I will continuously walk in victory. You have to declare it. I will continuously walk in victory. I will continuously walk as a child of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I want us to know that based on that, you can always stand up. It doesn't matter how long that problem is. We have the advantage as children of God that nothing, nothing. You stand to stop any negative thing. Whether against your children, against your household, you have the authority to stand against it. Based on that, it's more or less, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. When God sent the flood into um, the earth in the book of Genesis chapter 8, at the end of it, God remembered Noah and delivered him from the flood. The Bible says that God, when God remembered Noah, he allowed a wind to blow and the wind brought down the flood. I want us to stand up and pray that, Lord, let your wind of deliverance blow into my life. Let your wind of deliverance blow into my family. Let your wind of deliverance blow into my situation. You know what you are going to. We all have peculiar situations. I do not know the situation, but your wind of deliverance, just as Noah was delivered from that flood, Noah was delivered from that flood, Father, let your wind, it doesn't matter the flood that seems to be attacking me and my household, that I cannot tell anyone, but Father, Lord, today I cry to you, that your wind of deliverance will come upon us, we come upon every area. Come and calm the storms in my life. Come and calm the storms in my family. Let your power come and deliver. Let your wind of deliverance come upon me and my household. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, today I declare that flood that has held me down, that flood that has caged my family. When God called, uh, called Abraham, he said, you are blessed and you are blessed indeed. And he said, whoever causes you, they will be caused. I want you to pray, I am a child of Abraham. I receive the blessings of Abraham according to Genesis chapter 12. In my going out, I am blessed. In my coming in, I am blessed. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray also concerning the church of God. Father, Lord, let your blessings be upon the church. Whoever causes the church of God, the causes we go back to them. In the name of Jesus. 
Uh, David said it this way. He said, you have delivered me from the strong man, the strong enemy. Father, Lord, deliver your church from the strong enemy. Deliver us from the strong man. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. When it was time, God delivered Daniel from the lion's den. In Daniel chapter 6, Father, deliver us from every lion of our life. From every bear of our life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, your word says you are faithful to the end. Father, you are a, cov a covenant-keeping God. Your covenant upon my life, upon my family. Father, the covenant of peace, the covenant of safety. Father, let it be upon me, let it be upon my household. In the name of Jesus, I reject, O oh Lord, the strongholds of the enemy that will want to put me in captivity. I reject the stronghold of the enemy that will want to put my children in captivity. I reject the stronghold of the enemy that will want to put the church in captivity. Father, by your blood, contend with anything that contends with us. Contend with anything that contends with our family. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, arise, O Lord. Let the enemies of our lives be scattered. Let the enemies of your church be scattered. Father, the time to deliver has come. The time to favor has come. The time to set captives have come. In the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, let captives be set free. Let us be set free, O oh Lord, from the attack of, the man, of man. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare my earth is restored. Because the word of God says in Psalm 107 verse Verse 20, he sent forth his word and his word healed. Father, Lord, we declare healing concerning every area of our lives in the name of Jesus. We declare that the sent word will bring about healing. We bring about deliverance in the name of Jesus. We put the blood mark over our lives. We put the blood mark over the church of God. We put the blood mark over the heavens. We put the blood mark over everything that concerns us. Because when they see the blood that will pass over, by the reasoning of the blood of Jesus, we overcome every attack of the enemy. Every attack of the enemy concerning my documents, concerning my children, concerning my career, concerning my health, concerning my marriage, concerning, oh Lord, every Everything, my grandchildren, Father, by the blood I overcome. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, by your almightiness, we will move forward. And no more stagnation, no more retrogression. We will move forward in the journey of life. The path of the just shined brighter and brighter towards the perfect day. It was 430 years the children of Israel were in captivity. But in one night, they were delivered. And nothing held them down any longer. Father, nothing will hold me down mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. I am moving forward. I am forging forward. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you because you are a covenant-keeping God. Your word says we should call upon you and you will answer and deliver. We've called upon you, whether we know it or not, any areas of our lives or family that the enemy is still holding us down. Father, today, by your almightiness, let there be deliverance. Let there be, O oh Lord, restoration of anything that was stolen away from us in the name of Jesus. My God and my King, as we move forward as a church, people will see the evidence in our life that you've met us. We've had an encounter with you, and our lives will not remain the same. Once more, we thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed.